Hi everybody, today Jenny and I are playing Glory to Rome. It's a card game for two to five players uh, by Carl Chudik. He's the uh, same designer who created Innovation um, and the previous version of Glory to Rome, which uh, was essentially the same game but with a bunch of cartoony graphics on the cards and uh, uh, looked quite a bit different than this newer black box version. Um, which is available now. Jenny is setting up the play area here. Um, we've got sort of a variety of things going on here. So over to this side we have building sites. Uh, so the, the idea of this game is that Rome has been burned to the ground and you are charged with uh, rebuilding it. Uh, Caesar has come to you and said rebuild Rome and I'm giving you all these resources in which to, which to use to do that. Uh, so, uh, we have these building sites. These ones down here that are face up, these are in-town sites. So in a two-player game, we get uh, two building sites uh, for every, two of every building site. Um, so I have rubble building sites, wood building sites, uh, concrete, brick, stone, and marble building sites. And then above them, uh, all the other ones, these are out-of-town building sites. So we'll be able to use these as well. Um, however, we'll need to utilize uh, more actions to be able to use those out-of-town uh, sites to build upon. The key here to Glory to Rome uh, is the strangeness of the cards, um, because cards behave very differently. Uh, so I'm going to pass you over to Jenny, and Jenny's going to talk to you about uh, the cards and what the various cards, or what the various things on the cards will do. So you have lots of different roles in Glory to Rome, and those are represented by the left side of the card. So the yellow cards are all laborers, the green cards are all craftsmen, the red cards are all legionaries, etc., etc. This is a card in Glory to Rome. This card can be a role or clientele card. It can also be a building card, like this aqueduct. Cards can be materials, in this case concrete. And every card also has a value. This card is valued at 2. Finally, cards will have structural bonuses if you build them. Um, the first order of business with Glory to Rome is to determine the starting player. So to do that, we draw, we each draw a card from the deck and lay it in the pool. So I drew the foundry, so that starts with an F. I drew the market. Which starts with an M. So I'm going to go first because alphabetically I'm first. And those become our starting pool. So these cards, they'll stay out here in the center, uh, and this pool will grow and change in these uh, cards will um, become cards that we get to to uh, take in and use in various ways. Um, but to begin with, these will be the starting pool cards. So I am the starting player, so I'm now looking at my hand and I want to decide what I want to do. Um, basically, I have to choose a role from my hand. So again, I'm looking at either laborer, craftsman, or legionary as a role that I want to play. Um, now, one thing to take into consideration is when I play a role out of my hand, which means I'm effectively going to take that card and lay it out for everybody to see, I can no longer build the building. So this card, just as an example, is the insula. Its power is that my maximum clientele size gets a little bit bigger, and clientele is the roles that will add up here later in the game. Um, so I want to be looking at those to determine if there's anything that I really want to build out of my hand before I play it as a role, because I'm not going to get to build it if I play it as a role. So I have the bath, which says that when performing a patron action, each client you hire may perform its action once as it enters your clientele. No, oh, that's okay. It's not bad. Latrine, before performing a thinker action, I can discard one card to the pool. No, oh, that's okay too. Market maximum vault size plus two, and road, I can use any material towards the completion of stone structures. Ooh, that's kind of interesting. I like that. Okay, I think I'm going to want to build that one. So uh, the first thing I'm going to want to do then, or the insula, actually, that's pretty good. No, you know what, I think I'm going to build the insula. So I'm going to lead craftsmen, and the craftsmen 
says that I can lay a foundation from my hand or fill a structure from my hand. So I tell everybody, I tell Jason, I'm leading craftsman. Now, I have the opportunity, once that card is led, um, to uh, think or follow. Those are my two options. I can think or follow. Um, in order to follow, I need a card uh, that matches that card that Jenny just played. So I need a green uh, craftsman card. Um, I don't have any. My hand is filled up with uh, gray architect cards and one laborer card. So I don't have uh, a craftsman card that I can play. Uh, so I could think, and by thinking, uh, I essentially, I draw up to my maximum hand size, which at the beginning of the game is five, so uh, I could draw a card up to my maximum hand size. Since I'm already at my maximum hand size, I could just draw one extra card uh, from this deck, or I could take a jack. Um, jacks are essentially wild cards, so a jack can be anything, uh, any role. So if I took a jack, I could use that later to be an architect or to be a laborer, um, or to be a craftsman, or, or anything else. Um, I also uh, have the option, we're playing this Republica Romana version, so I can play two cards of the same role, like it was a jack, like it was a wild card. So if I really wanted to do that craftsman action, um, I could play two of these architect cards, which I have uh, plenty of. So let's say I'm going to do that. I'm going to take these two, because I don't want the necessarily the wall or the amphitheater right now, um, and I'm going to play them down and say, I'm following your craftsman. I'm going to petition uh, these two architects to follow you as craftsmen. So now it goes back to Jenny, and Jenny's going to perform her craftsman action. Okay, so my craftsman is going to build an insula. So in order to do that, I take the insula, I set it off to the side, and I go and I grab a foundation from the rubble pile. So that foundation then sits under my insula and you can see there from the uh, having that little under construction thing that it's now under construction. I'm going to need one more rubble to complete construction of this building and then it will be done. So that completes my craftsman action. Now Jason will perform his. And when I'm looking at my cards, uh, the, what I want to build, uh, I think, is not that aqueduct, not this bar, but this tower. Um, this will allow me to use rubble in any structure. You may lay foundations out uh, onto town sites at no extra cost. So uh, that's kind of a neat uh, uh, bonus that I get from the tower. So I'm going to do that. Uh, as my uh, craftsman action, I'm going to take this tower and uh, it's matching concrete foundation. So I'm going to play this down beside my board and the tower. And now my tower is underway. Uh, so uh, as a last step, I'll take these cards that we played and they're going to go into the pool. Our pool of cards has now grown. We now have uh, those architects in there in this craftsman card. So it, it's growing. Uh, and now it's come over to me, so I get to decide whether I want to lead or whether I want to think. Thinking would let me get back up to my uh, five cards, um, or I could lead one of these two cards. I could lead Architect, or I could lead Laborer. Um, I think I am going to lead... Uh, I'm going to lead this Laborer card, because I need to get some some uh, of these resources in the pool and I need to get them into my stockpile and that's what laborer lets me do take a material from the pool into my stockpile so I'm gonna say I am leading the laborer action following Jenny's gonna follow it okay so uh, for the laborer action it comes back to me and I say okay what do I want uh, well since I'm building this uh, concrete structure, this tower, uh, I need some concrete in my stockpile. So I'm going to take this concrete and I'm going to tuck it under my board and now concrete is added to my stockpile. And then I'm going to take brick and add it to my stockpile. So Jenny's taken brick and that's it. Our turn is over. So labor action is done. It goes into the pool and Jenny's is there as well. All right, so it's my turn, and I am looking at this insula that I have. 
and I'm looking at my cards and I'm thinking right now it'd be great to be able to pick up all that rubble because um, I know now that Jason is working on something that's going to use it so it'd be nice to get it out of the pool so he can't have access to it and to do that I'm going to play the legionary so the legionary says that um, you can demand materials from the pool and from your neighbor's hands and put them into your own stockpile. The way this works is I lead Legionary and I tell Jason I'm leading Legionary. So um, I have the option now of either, uh, again, thinking or following. Um, uh, I actually, I don't, I don't have a Legionary in my hand, I have an architect. Um, so I'm not going to follow, I'm going to think. Uh, and this time I'm going to think by taking a jack. So that's my action. Okay, so I am leading Legionary. I now have to perform the Legionary action, which requires that I demand a resource, but in order to demand it, I have to have that resource in my hand. Now, the only resource that I have left in my hand is rubble. So I'm going to take this rubble and I'm going to put it over on the Rome Demands uh, little sheet thing, and I announce Rome Demands Rubble. Now I get to take all of the rubble from the pool into my stockpile and all of the rubble from Jason's hand. So, what does he have? So she doesn't know what my hand is, obviously. The hands are kept secret. We've just been playing them face up. Um, but what's in my hand is, is concrete, not rubble. Um, so I say, go fish. Uh, I have no rubble for you. Uh, and uh, it continues on. I say boo, and I take my rubble back from the Rome Demands sheet back into my hand, and the rest of the rubble that I collected from the pool goes into my stockpile. Okay, so it's back to my turn, um, and I'm going to show you how to do this architect action. Um, so I'm using this card now as an architect, not as concrete, and uh, not for the aqueduct. Um, I'm going to use it as uh, an architect. So, uh, and the reason I want to do this because Architect lets me lay a foundation from my hand or fill a structure from my stockpile. I have concrete in my stockpile and I need concrete in order to complete uh, my tower. I actually need two concrete to complete my tower. Um, so this is going to let me get at least one concrete uh, onto my tower. So I say I am uh, leading Architect. And then Jenny? I got nothing. I can't follow architect so I'm gonna just think so I'm gonna draw four cards to fill my hand and that'll be my action. So that's Jenny's action. Okay uh, so uh, my architect I am taking a material from my stockpile and filling one of my structures with it. So I'm gonna take this out from my stockpile and it's going over here and going underneath my little stack of cards. So now I have a tower that has one concrete added to it. Uh, I need two in order to complete it, um, but it's halfway there. Uh, and I take my architect and it goes back into the pool. Architect action done. Hey, so in my think action during Jason's turn, I acquired some good cards. Uh, what I'm going to take advantage of here is the patron. So the patron allows me to take a client from the pool and add it to my clientele. The size of your clientele is limited by your influence um, and that grows as you finish constructing buildings. So I'm going to lead the patron. Jason? Um, I would love to be able to follow the patron. Um, I don't have a patron card of my own. My hand is almost empty except for this jack. This jack, however, can be whatever it wants to be. So, and I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it to follow patron. So, playing the patron, again, I go to the pool and I look for clients that I want to add to my clientele. So, um, one of the ones I go back to a lot is the craftsman. I like to have craftsmen in my clientele. It's a very handy card, so I'm going to grab that and take it, add it to my clientele just there. And uh, I would like to add this architect my clientele so that's what I'm gonna do and that's it with the patron action and they go into the pool jacks uh, the jack however it doesn't go back into the pool it just goes back into the stack of jacks all right uh, it's my turn again uh, but I have no cards to play uh, so uh, I need to uh, think 
Um, so I can either think by taking a jack or by filling my hand back up to the hand size. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take five cards uh, to fill my hand back up. Uh, and that's my turn. Um, and I don't get to follow when he thinks, so I have no ability to do anything. That's right. Uh, once you've, if you've uh, thought instead of follow or, or, or led, then uh, your turn is over. Uh, and then it goes right over to Jenny. So on my turn, um, uh, I will use the merchant action. Um, the merchant allows you to put a material from your stockpile into your vault. The vault, similar to the clientele, is limited in size by your influence. So I still have two slots available in my vault, so I'm going to take, with my merchant action, um, one of these and put it into my vault. But first, Jason? Uh, I have to decide if I want to uh, follow that merchant action. Um, and uh, really, normally I would, um, because the vault is... Uh, when you have cards in your vault, they score you points at the end of the game. Um, but you need something from your stockpile. You need something in your stockpile to move to your vault. So even though I have a merchant that I could play to follow, um, I don't have anything in my stockpile to move to my vault, so that would be a wasted action. So uh, I'm going to say, well, instead of following or uh, this turn, I'm going to think, and I'm going to think by taking a jack. Okay, so that leaves it to me. So with my merchant, I'm going to take that brick. I don't need it right now in my construction, and it's worth two victory points at the end of the game. So I'm going to take that brick and I'm going to uh, flip it over, I think, or no? Yeah. I don't think it really matters. Do you flip it? Yeah, I think it goes in and upside down. Okay, into the vault. So it's there for the end of the game, and the merchant goes into the pool. It's come back to me, uh, so my turn. Um... I need to get. Uh, I need to finish this tower, uh, so I'm going to need more concrete for that. Uh, I have some concrete in my hand. Uh, one of the ways that I can get uh, uh, resources from my hand to my structure under construction is by playing a craftsman. It lets me uh, fill a structure from my hand. Uh, so I could play this craftsman roll to try and get this guy over here. I'm going to do that. I'm going to play Craftsman. I am leading Craftsman. Do you follow? I'm going to think and follow. This is a really cool thing about Glory to Rome. So um, I do not have any Craftsman in my hand. So normally you would say I can't follow because I don't have Craftsman. However, that clientele, the Craftsman that I added to my clientele earlier, is going to allow me to follow without having the Craftsman role in my hand, which is pretty cool. Um, so that allows me to do a think and follow, where I get to take two cards to fill up my hand, and I follow using this craftsman action from my clientele. Um, just a side note, that could be multiplied, so I could have three craftsmen in my clientele. Every time someone uh, leads a craftsman action, I'm going to get to play those three craftsman actions as a follow. That's a, a great thing to have is uh, a clientele filled with all different types uh, of roles um, so that you always have an ability to, to follow and maybe follow multiple times. Um, so coming back to my craftsman action, I'm going to take uh, my concrete uh, and I'm going to uh, fill a structure from my hand. Uh, so this is going to go under here uh, and that completes this structure. I now have the two concrete uh, that I need. Uh, as indicated right here, uh, to complete the structure. So the way that you complete a structure is you pull out the foundation and it goes up here, adding to your influence. So now um, my influence, which limits my clientele size uh, and my vault size, uh, has gone up from 2 to 4. And this structure gets stacked and is complete and now I get the bonus. So the bonus here is you may use rubble in any structure. You may lay foundations out onto town sites at no extra on out of town sites at no extra cost. So uh, how I was telling you earlier on in the game that these out of town sites that you need to use once you've taken all of these in town sites, these normally cost you an extra action 
uh, to be able to, to, to get them. Um, with this tower, it doesn't do that. This allows me to use them just like they were normal sites. Uh, so that's very cool. Uh, I am done my craftsman action. Jenny? Over to me. So the craftsman, again, allows you to lay a foundation from your hand or fill a structure from your hand. Now, I have two options right now that are both kind of interesting. I can fill, I have an insula that's under construction. All I need is one uh, rubble material to complete it. And I have two in my hand, so I could complete this insula right away, which would automatically increase my clientele size by two. That's kind of cool. The other option that is attracting me right now um, is to use the craftsman to lay a foundation from my hand. Um, now I happen to have the same card that Jason just completed, which is the tower card. That's kind of a cool card, being able to use rubble in any structure. I know, though, that that's going to create a lot of competition for rubble, and I'm not sure that I want to do that. <laughs> so I'm also looking at the Circus Maximus over here, which says, each of your clients may perform its action twice when you lead or follow its role. That is a really powerful card. I'm tempted by it. And we do have, there is one stone in the pool already. There's probably going to be more eventually. I don't know, it's really tempting. Um, I, think, I think what I'm going to do though is uh, I'm going to just take the safe route and uh, fill that insula and increase my clientele size because I, I do like the advantage of being able to add more clientele uh, and fast. So I'm going to go ahead and complete this. And just like Jason just did, I get to take that foundation out and add it to my influence, which means I now have an influence of three, so my vault can now go up by two more. But my clientele is now at five, so I can have up to five clientele. So why is your clientele at five and not three? Because of the insula, so the maximum clientele size plus two. Uh -huh. The maximum clientele size by default would be three with this influence, but plus two, I get five. Fantastic. Very cool. So that's the end of uh, that round. And now it's Jenny's turn. So I'm looking at my cards, and I'm really thinking I want to get this Circus Maximus underway. Um, I have a, a sort of a two-edged advantage now happening. So my clientele size is five, like we were just talking about. And with this Circus Maximus, I could do some major damage um, and really take advantage of that. So I would like to build this. In order to do that, I'm going to need some stone. I don't currently have any, but I do have a Legionary. And there is one stone in the pool, possibly more in Jason's hand that I don't know about it. So I'm going to take a chance, and I'm going to lead Legionary. Jason? Uh, so now I have the option of following. I don't have a legionary of my own. I do have a jack, however. Um, not really uh, in need of a particular resource at this moment, so I think I might just think uh, and take a card. Uh, so I do that, and I get myself a green card. Okay, so I get to complete my legionary action now. In order to do that, I think I mentioned earlier, we need to declare. So I'm going to say, Rome demands stone. Off I go to the pool to get my stone, and I wait to see what Jason tells me. And wah, wah, I have stone to oh, give to Oh, no. So Thank you. Goes. So both of these stone will go into my stockpile. All right, so Jenny and I have been playing for a little bit longer now, um, and uh, the game is over. Um, and it's over because I just completed this catacomb building, which says upon completion, the game ends immediately, score as usual. So we're going to show you scoring. Um, this is what the game kind of looks like when it's over. Uh, you end up with a lot of clientele, so every time uh, Jenny would perform the architect action, if I followed that, I got two uh, architect actions just by virtue of what I had in my clientele. Um, and likewise, she had a bunch of stuff in her clientele. Um, we have a bunch of cards in the vault. Now remember, what's in the vault is going to be scored. Um, so these face down cards, we'll flip them up, count uh, the value of them, and that'll be uh, uh, go towards our ultimate score to see who won the game. Um, aside from the catacomb, there's also another card which I happen to have actually in my hand at the end of the game 
Forum Romanum. This is another end game card that, uh, in fact, if you finish it, lets you win immediately whenever you have a client of each roll. So you need to have one of each. Uh, and uh, one material of each type in your stockpile. So down here I would have had to have, uh, you know, a marble, a stone, uh, wood, rubble, etc. Uh, so that's a, that's a crazy card. Um, but it stayed in my hand, I never actually got it out into play. Uh, end game conditions, so you, there's that forum card, there's the catacomb card. Uh, if you actually end up using all of the in-town sites, and we almost did, we used all but one rubble card, um, then that signals the last round of the game. Uh, if this draw deck is used up, that signals the end of the game. Uh, players can also surrender, which didn't happen. Hmm. Um, so we're going to score the game. So how do we do that, Jenny? So the way you score the game is you get uh, one point for each influence that you have. Okay. You also get one point for each of your, you score according to value for um, anything in your vault. So each of these is worth, again, the, the influence coins that you see at the bottom. Um, and then you get three points for each of these. So there are merchant bonuses. Um, this one, for example, gives you three victory points to the player with the most rubble in their vault. So it pays off to have certain types repeated in your vault. Right, and there's one for every different type. Uh, so you've got a stone, marble, brick, etc. So uh, let's take a look and score the game. <laughs> can turn the camera off now. <laughs> I can turn it off now. It off. Actually, a very odd thing to happen. It generally, uh, I, I think I lose usually at this game. Um, <laughs> glory to Rome. Later. 